button has been clicked, but I actually do already need to get out of my chair. Eh, it'll probably be fine, but uh, my other computer that has my uh, cameras on, I forgot to turn the speakers off. So every time a notification pops up, it makes a noise. You probably won't be able to hear it, but like, if it's Possibly. annoying. Yeah, if it's annoying, I'll get up and go turn off those speakers. Let us know in the comments what uh, <laughs> what all you hear. Beeping yeah. or children playing, I don't know. It's going to be one of those <laughs> yeah, it's, weird nights. It's always, always something. Um, let me know if you can smell burnt hair. I'm, uh, I'm missing part of my beard right here from welding earlier. I was, uh, <laughs> I was repairing the rear frame section of a Polaris Ranger and putting a trailer hitch, a two inch receiver back in it because they ripped it off the back of the chassis. And as I was laying underneath it, uh, welding a plate to the bottom of the chassis to tie everything back together, I, uh, I caught my beard on fire. We underneath my noticed. welding hood <laughs> yeah you can't really but like there's like a pretty obvious uh little hook right here where it's missing at least it's a pretty reasonable yeah like it, it it's not wasn't down here it's the side so like i'll have to i'll have to trim up the other side to match and then you won't even be able to tell but it'll grow back by morning i'm pretty certain yeah, probably not, but <laughs> that wasn't super cool. That was one of the one of the least favorite things I did today. Otherwise, today was pretty much a day full of interruptions. We had 60 degree and sunny weather, but it was super duper windy. But that made everybody call my shop wanting to get their motorcycles running. Yeah, hey, I'm trying to get my bike going tomorrow. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be like 50 and like a nasty storm tomorrow. And then it's supposed to be back in the 40s again. So, you know, it's uh, super important to get your motorcycle out today. Um, happens every nice day. Yeah. I didn't do too much today. I just did some cleaning, some played around with some of the drawings and you saw earlier put in some like nut inserts and a couple of new pieces um took the dog for a hike got him outside it's pretty nice today uh i don't know mid 70s i'm gonna brag about mid 70s while i can before it's 120 <laughs> yeah yeah i guess i mean it was nice outside today it was just a little windy it was, you know, mid mid sixties with wind. Um, mm -hmm. But there's that storm that goes from Austin, Texas, all the way up above Canada. That should be here tonight sometime. So all the wind from that was coming in, and then uh, it's supposed to drop temperature wise tonight and be crappy for the next ten days again. So, super cool. I'm about ready to be over with all that stuff. Uh, what's going on, everybody, in the chat? Um, otherwise, really, uh, the only new thing I have, I was goofing around. I want to build a buggy because everybody's got these tube chassis all looking badass and made me want to build one. So I took the uh, Vanquish Flatline chassis, the Vanquish compatible Flatline chassis, and I made uh, buggy center sections with some cutouts for 3 16 tubing. So like a 3 16 tube slots right into that slot, and then you can just you know weld it on there. Um, so I've got I've got a few pairs of those um, to work with. And also, my buddy Sean wants me to build a sixth scale replica of his Ultra 4 car. Uh, so I made a couple of quick ones with the SCX6 uh, skid pattern for It'll quarter inch girl. tubing. It's going to be a rather large, rather large uh, build. So 
but it's it'll be quarter inch uh, solid rod and quarter inch tubing. So that'll be fun. And then obviously while I was already doing this, I went ahead and did the hard line angled skid. Same the same thing, just with a with an angle, but the angled skid's not legal in the We no, RC rock. rock. Yeah. Yeah. Um so but uh, my buddy is, what you're saying is we're not getting a SCX six chassis, we're getting a tube buggy you're gonna start producing. Hmm, nope, I'm gonna make one. <laughs> um, but my buddy Tom's getting his yeah, Tom's getting his laser dialed in pretty well. It's gonna be damn near impossible, but I mean, you got it's pretty much a glass, pretty much glass edge on the on the cuts here. They're not sharp at all. Um, super nice. So happy with that. So, otherwise, not a whole Zach lot. Uh, yeah. Zach, when are they going to be on the site? I don't know. Probably won't be. But, I, I mean, I guess I could. I already have them figured out. They're already, I already have the, I already have the uh, files done. Infant scale driver, yeah, for the SCX6, yeah. Uh, I see you're drinking a squirt. I've got some squirts in the 12 volt cooler in the back of the Jeep. I did clean the cooler, by the way. The bubbly. Oh, it's bubbly. Oh, same color can. <laughs> I, I can't drink just normal water. Also, I was going to try and yeah. mix these in to see if anybody noticed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't want to get demonetized again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get the Mountain Dew koozie. A little sleeve. Yeah. Not that I go that hard on a Monday night, but, you know. No. Those Coors Banquets are a little taller can, though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're like... Yeah. I think they just had to be different, just like their glass bottles. I was noticing that. I was like, what's up with this can? Yeah. They're just annoyingly taller. Yeah. I got to recalculate my uh, stacking in the coolers. Yep. Or just buy a different beer. <laughs> yeah. Leave those at leave those at home and take something else with you. The the stuff I go to that I would drink that at are probably gonna be all day drinking, so I'm not <laughs> I'm actually alright with some beer like that. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, uh, what's new in the chat, everybody? It's been a been a week since we've been on. I haven't gotten shit done. Just working is all I've been doing. You were off. No, you weren't. Yeah, you were off for a few days. You were off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Yep. And I go to work Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm off again for... <laughs> but this is the end of it, though. So, uh, you know... Yeah. I might go somewhere. Go. I might go camping this weekend. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley says you don't even want to know what I'm doing at work right now. Well, for one, you're watching us, so you can't be working that hard. <laughs> you're paying paying some kind of attention to us. Um. Yeah. So I've just I've decided that on the lathe. You can see all the stickers on the lathe behind me. I've decided that for every company that I make parts for, I'm just going to start sticking their stickers on the lathe. On well, on whatever machine their parts come out of, the, whether it be the lathe or the mill, um, I'll start sticking all their uh, stickers on the machine, and then hopefully it'll turn into like a sticker bomb wrap type thing. I was going to wrap this machine when I bought it because like. I don't like the blue. I, I don't mind the creamy-ish white that most of the machine is, but I don't like the blue on the door and the um, chip tray and coolant tank. And, like, the door and the chip tray are two totally different colors of blue, so it's kind of, like, it bothers me. Like, if they were the same color blue, I could probably live with it, but... I can't do the two different colors of blue. So I think I'm going to wrap the door in a white 
or like a creamy white like the rest of the machine is, and then I'll just sticker bomb the whole thing. It's gonna be impossible to match that. <laughs> yeah, it'll well as long as it's close enough, and then I just sticker bomb it. It'll be fine custom brazen wrap like the truck yeah i could do that too it um it really wouldn't be that difficult i thought about taking like all of the files all of the all of the chassis files and all of the all i mean all the brazen files really um in like outline form and printing those on a wrap and just wrapping like the machines in prior brazen products staggered together yeah exactly. just kind of stacked and layered and oh that's a 2016 high low that's a 2019 high low that's a, a team edition chassis that only however 20 of them got released or whatever <laughs> yeah uh i went to jonathan's this weekend and he has that one hung up in his uh shop <laughs> that particular frame I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Zach went to a wedding Saturday night and got hammered bar hopping afterwards. Still pulled off a top three finish in all classes with a horrible hangover. Should have drank some water, man. Uh, moving three massive pieces of equipment. Sounds like fun. Don't drop it. Yeah. Broke free at lunch last week and took my four wheel steer rig out for a scenic crawl. I should have gone to Indianapolis. I on Saturday they had a trail run. A bunch of guys did down in Indy. Well, Lebanon, um, whatever. Where, yeah, where'd they go? Same thing. Uh, Abner Abner Longley Park. Um, there's a crawling area there. It looked like they had a pretty good turnout. I didn't know about it until it was too late for me to go. It was the thing. Like, like I probably morning. no the morning of, like oh. I could have rushed to the shop, grabbed my charger, grabbed batteries, plugged the charger in in the jeep, and charged batteries on the way there off an inverter. Like I could, I probably could have made it there, but like I didn't want to feel that rushed. If I would have known no. about it Friday, like Friday afternoon, I would have charged batteries and stuff before I left, and I would have just taken my trucks home with me. I was just but, saying, you have gotten there, then uh, forgot your radio or the battery. Yeah, either cool. way. Yeah. Yep, pretty much. Josh like that firearms this. wrap, but using chassis templates, yeah. Yeah, Josh, you, uh, you missed my I, – I made some buggy – center belly things out of uh out of the flatline chassis um i should message josh and see how to get in on this uh build along thing he's been posting a bunch of stories uh, about a um build along that he's doing he's got chassis templates and all that stuff he's working on so i need to let me see how i can get in on that i want to build a buggy i want to build a buggy bad Um, it's Matt from SPG in the house. Yeah, <laughs> Harley, Matt, same person. <laughs> I just don't um, know if I, I don't know if I have the patience to 3D print all those templates or if I'd have to, I think I'd probably just make them into a tree and send them out and have them multi-jet printed. The, uh, I think I would probably end up doing that. Unfortunately... Josh doesn't catch all of our stream because he had made those sweet headlight lenses for me. And um, he had informed me that they were returned back because of uh, USPS. <laughs> Dude. <sighs> like I said, there's just no freaking way that that can be legal. That, that your federal mail gets returned to sender if you don't pay a third party to bring it to your that. door. Like, what kind? Of, you already paid shipping to get it there. It, it should already be delivered. I shouldn't have to pay a third party 
to go get the stuff. Oh, I know. It, it just <laughs> it just can't be legal. There's no way. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what I can do about that. I'm just gonna leave them a Google review. That fixes everything. <laughs> yeah, just leave a bad Yelp review. They um yeah they actually steal from me often. <laughs> yeah. Just like that uh, body filler that they said got delivered because they can't return it because it has a hazmat on it, so yeah. you can't return it. So they just said it was delivered, so that's that's really cool. Yeah. I want to build a tube rig, but can't seem to jump over the 3D printing hurdle. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. Like, the, these, these templates and jigs, they're fantastic that Harley's showing and building and and sharing i it's a it's amazing but somebody somebody with an ender 3 is going to have weeks of 3d printing into them that's why i said i'd probably end up trying to make them into a parts tree and sending them off for multi-jet printing dear postmaster general yeah well you called you said you called the post office didn't you yeah, they told me to download that third-party app. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I Especially don't since I had them back in the mail less than 30 minutes after they came in the first time. I know. Yeah. yeah. Let's RC what's going on, guys. Um, yeah, they, I just can't, I can't understand how that's acceptable to anyone to anyone in the complex i yeah cuz even even if you order on amazon if you order something on amazon you, you cannot be... you can't yeah. ch- you can't specify what shipping company you want them to use i just have like, to uh, I, i've been looking at like who the seller is if it's sold through amazon or if it's sold through you know da 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 hobby shop because yeah. if it's the hobby shop, they're going to ship USPS, so... Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I did order from Deluxe, and I put in the notes. I was like, hey, I see you only have a USPS option. I was like, if this isn't, like, a padded envelope, it's they're going to send it right back. So I was like, let me know what the, the extra cost is for you, uh, UPS. But... I haven't heard back. They, that was like five uh, days ago. Yeah. I'm worried. Oh. <laughs> well, so Deluxe is running a little bit behind right now because they're so busy. They made a post about it like a week and a half ago. But yeah, um, could you guys help me out with something? We can damn sure try. <laughs> What's your question? Let's RC together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. My, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to tear the VFD out of the front line and even more stubby the stubby kit. I can get another probably eight millimeters out of it. If I, sh- I can stubby the trans up another eight millimeters. Um, you just be like filing or cutting those standoffs or whatever. Yeah, you or... cut the standoffs and then you you, fix, you just um, grind and cut on the top shaft is all it is. Um, and then I'll use that in some sort of a buggy build. I have been seeing some people and I was curious. There's no hole from the factory. But Josh showed uh, the other day on on his video that he posted, maybe it was Monday of last week, uh, whatever whatever video he posted from like the weekend, what he did on the weekend, he showed a mock-up of the VFD with the top shaft reversed and the spur and motor hanging off what would be the back of the trans. Um all these buggies are like super compact. My only question with that is with overdrive built in, in the transfer case, 
you have to run the transmission in the same orientation that it's already in. So what benefit is there to moving the spur gear and the motor to the rear other than to build a much deeper, I don't know, you couldn't even really do a much deeper interior because you still have the top gear and the top shaft in the same height plane. What benefit is there to moving the motor and the spur gear to the rear? I don't see one. I understand that like the buggy stuff, a lot of the most of the buggies are rear engine. Is that a but, thing, Zach? Is rear motor mount points? I'm not I'm I've not looked in I've only admired the pretty work. I've not actually looked at the Wii We Rock RC. Yeah, like, I, I mean, I've looked at some of their rules to like, you know, to see that like angled skid chassis aren't legal and things like that. But I mean, are there are there actually points for that? Interior clearance, pretty much the spur will be at the seatbelt bar, but the spurs under the dash. So like you, it's an easier place to hide the height of the motor to the rear to make it look scale as well. I don't see that. I'm so I'm sorry. I just I don't. The the height the, the height doesn't change. In fact, I would argue that you're taking away interior clearance if your if your transmission is center mounted. I would argue you're taking away interior clearance by moving that top shaft to the rear because all the spur stuff's underneath the dash bar and in front of the dash bar under the hood. Um I mean you could make a lower hood for sure if you move the spur gear and stuff to the back. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's definitely a cool concept. If motor is behind the B pillar, you get like an extra minus five. Oh. <laughs> I'll find some other way to get that minus five. I don't need that rear weight. Like... Uh, depends on what kind of motor you're going to run. Um, I don't know. Those revolvers, those are pretty small. That wouldn't really be too detrimental. I mean, they're there. small and they're light, but you still you still have you have an extra motor mount because the motor hangs rearward off of the back of the motor plate. You have so you have a motor plate back there that's mounted to the chassis, and you still have the spur gear. You still have the top shaft. You still have the slipper eliminator. So you're not losing any weight at all. In fact, you're adding weight and you're adding rear weight behind the B pillar. I don't know. That doesn't seem like my favorite idea. It's a cool idea. It's a clever idea. And I appreciate the engineering, but I don't think that's a decision I would have made. If anything, I would completely divorce the forward motor mount. I would divorce the motor mount from the transmission and be able to mount the motor where I wanted it in the chassis and then just run a prop shaft to the trans instead of it being a fixed position is probably how I would choose to do it. I'm trying to pull up the rules. Okay. Let's RC. So I have a G-Speed V4 chassis that I do comps with. I run, an, run SSD Diamond Pro axles. Wondering how I could run a portal in the rear and a straight in the front. I have Team Garage Hack Trans. Um, the SSD axle, can you flip the uh, third member over? If you can flip the third member over, that's the easiest thing to do. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, the issue you're fighting is that the axles are going to rotate opposite directions of each other. So... If your third member on either one of the axles can be flipped over, just flip one of them over and they will rotate in this normal direction. However, you're then going to be running a set of gears backwards. Uh, most cases, that's not an issue, but they are weaker uh, running them backwards. There are also reverse cut gears. So you could change the ring and pinion to a reverse cut gear. You can do it that way. Um, you could, if you wanted to run some sort of a carrier K 
carrier bearing, you could run a geared carrier bearing with two gears. So when you run in on one shaft and out on the other shaft, because there's two gears, your rotation would be reversed. So, I mean, there's, there's three or four different options to reverse the rotation of the rear axle or the front that's axle all, either way. That's what I run in that, uh, like really chopped up uh, jelly bean body I made. Um, I had hollowed out the F10 housing, did the reverse cut gear. Um, that way I could still, I didn't, you can either, you can flip the pumpkin on the F10s, but then you have a low pinion. But yeah. I wanted to do it to where I saw a high pinion because I thought that kind of defeated the purpose of running a portal. So I hollowed out the housing. Um, I believe I dremeled out the um, third member so you could flip the ring gear and everything yeah. fits. I even ran the cheap, um, I can attest to the durability of the, I think I got the reverse cut gears off Amazon because I was, I went the cheap route because it was a science experiment for me. So it's been working so far. So I've just been leaving it. Um, I yeah. do recall when I was spinning the ring gear, there was some ring gear walk, I think just like shoddy machining, but you know, yeah, knock on wood, it's been all right. But for my trucks, there's not a little, there's not a lot of rear weight on the like rear tires. So it's not under that much stress. I would not run those yeah. gears in a front axle because that's what's doing all the work. Yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah, there's a handful of different ways to handle what you're trying to do. It just kind of depends on uh, how you want to, how you want to do it. The most complicated way is air adding an extra set of gears. Um, the easiest way is to be able to flip the ring gear if you can rip, uh, flip the ring and pinion over. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, also, I'm, Josh will correct me if I'm wrong, but just the gear reduction in the portal box is like 33%. So you'll have an underdrive with that, that two gear portal. So I don't know if you're already running over and under gears, but you will probably have two yes. overdrive. Yeah, so if you're running a Team Garage Hack trans, depending on which trans from Team Garage Hack, if it's a two-point low or a Creeper T, you've got 30% overdrive to the yes. rear axle already, or You're to the front 60%. axle already. <laughs> so if you run, yeah, if you run the, the Team Garage Hack and a portal in the rear, you're going to be like a, <laughs> a paraplegic so, dog, just dragging like, ass everywhere. It's going to be a, like two to one, over two to one rotation. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be, I would say that's going to be your biggest issue is getting the gearing back where you want it to be with a transmission that already has 30% overdrive built into it. Um, Cause even if you do underdrive front gears, you're only reducing your overdrive percentage by like 10%. So you're still 20 ish percent overdrive but you're adding 30% ish underdrive to the rear. So you're still, you know, you're still way up there. You'd have to run overdrive ring and pinion and overdrive portal gears. I mean, potentially depending on where you wanted your gearing to be. Um, Harley designs has a great video explaining the mullet setups. Um, but if I recall correctly, it's difficult to find because he didn't like title it like that. It kind of seemed like a secondary part of his video that ended up being the primary reason I wanted to watch it. Um, but it was something here. with like a yellow bot. I think it was a yellow bodied VS 410. Look for, look for videos on his channel with a yellow. I think it's a yellow bodied VS 410. So I'm going to be doing a mullet in this. So when I get that rear axle, um, I can, maybe do a video on how I go about hogging out that F10 axle. <clears throat> um, yeah. For me personally, with Let's RC, I would take that drivetrain and just put that in a different truck and do F10 straight, F10 rear, and like a normal transmission. That'd be the simplest. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Adam, uh, any idea when front accessory tray for the high lows will be back in stock? That was one of the parts Wesley was working on today, uh, changing up the design on that printed cross brace a little bit. Yeah. So be, they're still in the works. Yeah, those will be going in. I'll be putting in that order maybe Wednesday. So I'm going to test print that and make sure everything's kosher before I go order 50 of them. <laughs> and then cry yeah. about it later if something yeah. doesn't fit exactly. Not sure what yeah. could be messed up on that. I didn't alter it too much, but um, I'd rather play it safe than sorry. Yeah. Let's RC. If you get on Harley Designs YouTube channel and search this video title, uh, that will have some gearing calculations in it for you. Um, your calculations are going to be different because you're running a two point low. Uh, and, and in this video, that's not the trans he was using, but the theory is the same. I'm sure Harley has a spreadsheet <laughs> with it listed. Yeah. I could have sworn that I could, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking of, of a different video I was trying to find, but I swear I searched for a video one day and I could not find it for the life of me. And then like, I just randomly clicked on a video that mm -hmm. I knew I knew the truck he was working on at the time when he was doing what I was looking for. And it happened to be the video I wanted, but like the video title was not at all what I was looking for. Sometimes it's hard to find that stuff. He, he can't miss find it because he's talked about that 3D printer uh, <laughs> bill too much. So he's been shadow banned. So you can't search his stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He talks about SCX 24 star 24 scale stuff too much. So, <laughs> and how fun yeah. it is. So he, YouTube shadow banned him. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, I'm, I'm like day 76 into this bad boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's going to be okay. I guess. I feel like I'm going to get to the point where I'm over sanding on it and I'm just going to like spray it and be okay with whatever outcome. <laughs> yeah. Just be fine with it after that. Yeah. I'll be like, ah, uh, it's going to be fine. Uh, we'll see. I got some. I'm, I'm very curious what the cost would have been to have that multi-jet printed. Yeah, man, honestly, I could find Like, there's, you still would have had a bunch of texture. <laughs> you still would have had a bunch of texture, but, like, the layer yeah. lines are... Yeah. Michael. Oh. Michael says, did you play with more skid angle on the VRD chassis? I did not play with a lot more angle on the VRD chassis. Um... This is hard to, this is hard to, um, it's hard, this is hard to explain without sounding like an asshole, kind of. Um, <laughs> there are, I like where this there is are, going. yeah, there are certain things that drastically change geometry of a vehicle and having a lot of skid angle when you can't really change the link positions enough to adapt that skid angle. It really changes a lot of things. Um, there is another chassis on the market for the vanquish chassis for the vanquish trucks that has a lot more skid angle to it. And the way they got away with more skid angle was by not changing where the belly is on the truck. So if you lay this other chassis on top of a factory chassis, their 12 degree skid angle versus the factory skid angle only nets you like four millimeters of clearance at the back of the skid uh, more than the factory chassis does, where we were able to pick up like eight and a half by moving where the belly is instead of changing the angle of the belly which allows us to keep the rest of the geometry where it should be. Um, there are going to be other scenarios where 
you know, that specific chassis may work better in a very specific scenario with regards to the way the rear of the chassis drives. But overall, my opinion and the reason I did what I did was Vanquish got the geometry damn near right where it needed to be. I just wanted to move the belly to where I wanted it to be. So a lot of times adding a lot of skid angle, it doesn't help. doesn't really help that much. I would much rather play with moving. I would much rather play with much higher clearance rear links and a, and a, you know, a drive shaft carrier bearing than with drastic skid angles, because another reason drastic skid angles, uh, change drive shaft angles and drive shaft angles get pretty wonky already as they are. So no, I didn't, but there's reasons why. Uh, I watched that video today. Actually, he lost me when he got to the math. That man knows way too much. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you're an engineer and a nerd at the same time. Uh, but the math isn't that hard to figure out if you, if you break it down step by step, um, I'm not a great, I'm not that great at math either. But if you if you slow it down and figure out step by step how he figured it out, it, it'll it'll come a lot easier to you. Uh, multi jet is that like Shapeways prints? It's similar. It's a different process, but it's it's a similar end product. It's a similar looking product. Like um, our our 3D printed parts are multi jet fusion printed now. And you could easily mistake them for Shapeways. The thing about multi-jet, um, like, like Shapeways dyes a lot of their parts. Anytime you order like a purple or an orange or a red Shapeways part, it's white nylon that they dye on the outside. That dye doesn't soak very far into the material. So when you, no. like if you ordered a, uh, one of our TRX4 conversion skid plates in red, the first couple times you drive it, you scratch the red and it's white underneath, and, and people got upset about that. The multi-jet fusion stuff is a solid color material. Unfortunately, most of it is either gray or black, So, but it's a solid color all the way through, which is nice. I believe I've seen a guy making his own chassis with around 22 degrees of skid angle. When would you say is too much? Well... Considering most of these drive shafts only have about 35 degrees of working angle, I'd say that's too much already. Um, the only, the only, yeah. So you're either, you either have to level the transmission out some way, but leveling the transmission out, there's such a height difference at a 22 ang 22 degree angle on the skid to level the trans out. You're raising the front of the trans so high that then your drive shaft is going to run into the servo. Like there, yeah. there's ways to do it clearly because people do it. But I, I would say, I would say any more than about 12 is, I don't think you even need 12. I think the six to 10 range is where I personally like my angled skid trucks. That's been the workable range we've found. The, Cause then you start, I, the more and more you stress those, drive shaft angles the less like your truck becomes that sole comp truck that doesn't run too much because if you take it out on a trail your drive shafts are going to have a bunch of slop after maybe an afternoon yeah. with the guys <laughs> here's here's the deal i will put my flat skid chassis class one truck up against a lot of drastic skid angle class two and three trucks. And I guarantee you they won't be nearly as impressed with their trucks after that. I might not be able to do everything they can do, but I guarantee you they're not going to be nearly as impressed with their shit as they are at the beginning of the day. I would much more, I would much rather to shorten the overall height of the truck raising the belly and lowering the rest of the truck and run compact components than I would to have a massive skid angle. Because if the skid never touches the ground, you don't need any angle. It's just, I don't know, just the way my, just the way my brain works. 
ready to get the front line out. No crawling this weekend. Just got back from a family getaway. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Skid Angle Chaser down? drive me insane. Yup. The real question is, where did you go and do sneak some tiny trucks with you? <laughs> yeah, he said no. He said no crawling this weekend. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, what it, bring I mean, the wife could have been like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Would it also depend on the size of the rock, especially if you're crawling on huge rocks and boulders versus more tame rocks? No, I don't think that matters at all, because the biggest determining factor of what rocks you can play on is tire size in my opinion you you know you take a truck with five inch tires you can crawl on a lot more stuff than a truck with 4.19s just because you're going to drop a 419 inside a hole that a five inch tire you know floats over i think tire size makes way more difference than skid angle does like i said time and a place for any setup yeah, good time for sure. Just out to western Kansas for the family's farm. Lots of pew-pews. Nice. Now getting this C1 carbon body ready. Oh, the TRD hats. Mine's, uh, yeah, both of us got new TRD hats thanks to Theron and Brazen hats. Yeah, um, <laughs> the, I have one complaint about the Brazen hats. They're white and light gray. I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't do white and light gray. I can that's wear that a... hat to dinner with my wife, and that's it. Like, that hat is, has to go in a glass case, and that's the only time <laughs> I can wear it. Um, because I'm going back to the Land Cruiser shop, I would have to agree that's a special occasion hat. <laughs> yeah. The days of these nice, clean fingernails, <laughs> it's about over. Gone. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. It does, it does look good. It does look good. I like it, though. That's actually a comfy yeah. hat. I, I put it on. I was like, this is I, actually yeah. comfy. I wore it to lunch today. The height of the hat works for my head. I have, um, I have like a way too expensive hat i bought at some boutique shop in new mexico and it's actually like a 60 dollar hat and it feels like a 60 dollar hat and that brazen hat feels pretty good yeah it definitely does i have some other hats and i'm like um this is gonna get trashed and (laughs) yeah do you think there will ever be a flat transmission that fits in the skid plate footprint skid would be thick but flat uh, I mean, you can run a three gear transmission that fits inside the footprint of a skid plate and sits flat. I mean, the the two point low, the two point low trans sits at a. Is it a six degree angle or is it a five? Is it a four degree angle? The two point low sits at a very minor angle. The Creeper T, the same. They're at a minor angle. Um, anything with a flat belly, you know, parallel to the ground, you had to wedge the There's Creeper T and two point low level. They, they've had 3D printed shims. Um, but otherwise, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of those setups. If you ran like a you know 20 degree skid angle. You'd have to have a really, really thick trans, uh, really, really thick skid plate to level the transmission out inside that area. And like Delrin, if you wanted to make that skid plate to level a 22 degree trans out of Delrin, that's expensive as shit. Delrin's not cheap. Like, I buy Delrin. It's- four inch wide strips that are four feet long. If you buy one of these, it's like $95. And that's only three eighths thick. If you had to buy stuff that was one inch thick to make that skid, I don't even want to know what that would cost.
Um, <laughs> did you buy one of those bougie melon hats? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm, the hat's over there, but I'm not getting up to look. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. My my brazen hats on the counter you know over what? there I'm by the gonna, computer, and then, the my, and then my and then my TRD hats over there. That's not. Is it a Richardson? I think gonna, it's a Richardson. I'm gonna Google the logo because I know what the logo is. I'm not getting up to go <laughs> get the hat. The brazen's the brazen hat that Theron sent. I think is a Richardson because the TRD hat's a Yupong. Um, speaking of skids, you think you'll have the skid for the mini done this week? I'm trying to, man. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get um, pro skids done this week and that skid done this week. The nice thing is I purchased the last time I bought Delrin, I had four four by eight sheets cut in four inch strips, and I ended up with like a, a remnant and the uh, mini skid that I designed for you fits inside that remnant and I've got enough material to make like 25 of them. So I probably will just do all 25. I'll do that entire stick and then I'll just send them to Christian and he can do whatever he wants to do with them after that. Uh, TRD hat is a Richardson. Okay. Then the other one's a Yupong. Need to hit you up again for some TRD stickers. Oh, so that so uh, another another thing that I have been having to do over the last week is teach myself how to be a wide format printer technician. I've been having an issue with my printer on and off since I've bought it. The on the on the panel on the control panel, the down arrow button has never worked. Of course, I bought it used and broken, so I've always found ways around this down arrow button issue. But this past two weeks, I have needed to make adjustments to the printer that required the down arrow button to work. So I had to remove the entire front display assembly and board off the printer and remove the board from the button assemblies. And I, so the button is just a standard momentary button, two prong, normally open. You click it, it's closed, you let go, it's open type of button. I unsoldered the button from the board. It had two pins that stuck through the board were soldered on the backside. Cool. I, I tested continuity at the button before I removed the button. And the button was functioning, but it was not doing anything. So I removed the button, and I checked the button off of the board, and it worked. And then I found that there was corrosion on the front side of the board, and the copper pad where the button should be touching was missing on one of the contacts. So I fixed that, and then when I went to clean the the uh, pins off on the button so that I could get them back through the holes in the board. I might've got the button a little too hot and it no longer buttoned. Oh, I got so, that. Yeah. So now I done fuck that up. <laughs> I'm like, okay, how can I, how can I fix this right now? So then I, uh, later Harley. So then I found a momentary, switch in the shop it was for a like an led chase bar and it had like a programming switch and it was momentary so i put the i i soldered two pieces of wire to the board where the button was supposed to be and i drilled a hole in the front panel where the button where the wires could come out of the front panel and then i soldered the switch this momentary switch to this to the wires <laughs> and it's hanging out the front of the it looks so ghetto uh, but it functions <laughs> but it functions now when you hit the down button the down button works so i fixed mm -hmm. that now i have to do the adjustments that i need to do but i was so interrupted today with a bunch of other things that i didn't get to do that 
That hat's not a Port Authority Flex Fit, is it? There's no way. Okay, I'm getting up. This is number one. I'm getting up. <laughs> I'm modifying a GX. <laughs> We're just doing extracurricular stuff tonight. <laughs> uh, well, I was wrong. It is a Port Authority Flex Fit. Um, they must not have known what font to use, and they used a random font for the Brazen Scale RC, which is fine. Um, but it's not the right font. And then, as always, TRD Adventures, Tim. Brett's complaining about free stuff, guys. Yeah, I'm complaining about free stuff over here. <laughs> we need purple brazen hats. We ha we did have um, some hats made at one time. We had some samples made that were they were black and purple. There were some that were that had like purple on the bottom side of the bills. There were some that had purple trim around them. And they had like the old brazen logo with the purple swoosh uh, embroidered in them. I know Jason May has one of them still. Um, the purple didn't look good though. Like it was just a weird color of purple. It wasn't the purple that we wanted. Right. And there's no, it's like, like this, like this tumbler. This is a purple tumbler. It doesn't kind of, it looks kind of blue on screen, but it's purple. But it's just not the right color of purple. I had this uh, laser etched with the round logo. And like it turned out good. And I, I wanted to put these on the website. But the purple just wasn't the purple I was looking for. I, I, get, I could do them in black or I could do them in gray or I could do them in whatever. But the purple just, just didn't work. Did you get a price on that body? Um, I need to. So when I made this front section, I did it on the like cut away part. Um, so what I was going to try and do real quick is graft this grill into the whole body file that I have. Um, but that's, I forgot I have to like go inside the model infusion and delete everything behind the grill otherwise it's like filled and that's like a lot of nylon that'd be there so yeah i'm gonna have to mess up that after the stream but uh i might i might see what it costs i don't know that might weigh less too i don't know yeah um grimace purple the mcdonald's character yeah <laughs> that mug isn't purple on my screen it isn't even close okay so <laughs> yeah, i mean you're I right the same thing you're right, wow. but um, so let me change. That almost looks um, like the door. It's definitely not. Like, I, can't, I don't know. I can't make them. I'll have to change, like, the temperature. Um, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't really feel like <laughs> I, already, I already done messed this up enough. We know it's not purple. It's it's purple, but it's the not, it's definitely not the correct purple. Like it's grimace purple, and it's not the purple it's I wanted. Purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the door is blue, the mug is there. Okay, now you can see the mug is purple. <laughs> um, any tips for brazing stainless three millimeter tubing? Is stainless TIG only? Uh, silicon bronze TIG rod. You're yeah. T you're gonna be TIG brazing. You're gonna need a TIG machine. Uh, you could do it with a oxy map. God dang it! I'm gonna get up again. All right, I'll be right back. So what's happening? <laughs> I can't wait for this to be done. <laughs> you can still see, I don't know. My biggest thing is getting all these print lines out. 
Okay, so if you don't have a TIG machine, you can go mm. to Tractor Supply. Go to Tractor Supply and get one of these OxyMap torch kits. There's an oxygen tank on the end of this, and you screw a map gas tank on the it's other like, end. It looks like what you'd find at your grandma's house. Yes. And then <laughs> Silver Solder. Uh, Harris Safety Silve Silver Solder. I think this is Safety Silve 45 maybe, I think. It comes with a flux. So you can silver solder with a map, oxy map torch, or you can get um, uh, brazing, uh, TIG brazing rod and do it that way with a TIG welder. Um, if you're just trying to use a regular map gas torch or a propane torch, I don't think you're going to get it hot enough to do what you need to do. Not in any kind of relative time anyway. You're going to spend so much time chasing heat around. These little torch kits are like jeweler's torches. that They're such a fine, high heat, you know, little flame that you can, you can fab up a bumper in minutes with silver solder and that torch. Um. KJ, this is a GX460. Um, well, so the file I got off Colts, I got the Colts 3D, um, it was a Land Cruiser Prado body, but I had grafted in the GX460, like Lexus grill, um, which it's not perfect if you really get close, but uh, it's pretty good for, for my, um, <laughs> looks good for me. I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, Toby, how am I planning on doing the windows? I guess I'll have to get up because all the windows are, right, I'll be right back. I'll go get what I have planned because it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, so if I wanted to run a 10.3 portal rear axle on my truck, can I flip the third member over on the 10 3? I don't believe you can. Um, but I've also never tried on a 10 3 axle. I don't think you can flip the third. Even if you could, it'd be a low pinion at that point, so it probably wouldn't be my first choice. Either way, you're gonna be you're gonna be modifying some stuff. Alrighty, so weld, weld coat forty five CF. I'll get that torch. The torch makes everything makes life so much easier. Like that little torch was, <laughs> I think it's like forty bucks at Tractor Supply. That's the way to go. So what I've done is I've printed the all the windows. Yeah, your front windows, front and rear windshield, and then your side windows. What I'm going to do is match these out on this uh, Lexan, and I'm going to score them and cut them out, um, and they should fit right in. What I've also entertained, because I'm – I'm going to be picky on the window tent. I think I'm going to get actual automotive window tent and put it on this Lexan. Because that Tamiya spray stuff, I think it looks, I think you get kind of like a, again, I'm not a painter, so I'm probably like heavy handed with it. And I'd probably just hose this stuff on. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm going to put actual window tent on because I can't, I can never get that Tamiya tent stuff to like look uniform. Yeah, it always. Yeah, I agree with you. I think sticking some automotive tint on there would look fine. Too. Yeah, you can just grab that stuff anywhere. Um, yeah. I'll probably do like twenty percent or something, something realistic. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's my plan. I don't know. Maybe it's a dumb idea. I'll find out. So, yeah, how thick is that Lexan? Do what? How thick is that Lexan? Um. I don't know. Let's find out. Because, like, my my metal masher trucks, like, obviously I have a kid, so um, the plastic that comes, like, if you get your kid a toy that has a, it's in a cardboard box that has, like, a plastic window in the front of it, like, so you can see the toy inside of it. Yeah. That stuff is super thin and super lightweight. 
It's what I use in my aluminum bodies. This is about a millimeter thick. Yeah. The stuff I've got is like way thinner than that. It's like paper thin. Yeah. I was up for something like I can epoxy in and hopefully it should <laughs> I shouldn't have to worry about it ever. Cause I did a I yeah. did a similar thing with a thinner on um a thinner like saying on that body, that little Land Cruiser body, but it actually cracked. <laughs> it looks kind of yeah. scale, but it cracked on a rollover. So, yeah, that's the difference. The Lex, literally Lexan instead of polycarbonate. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I figured Lexan would be better, but I don't know. Yeah. Tim wants Hopefully to know how much. I haven't. <laughs> uh, haven't. Uh, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket. I mean, I guess I could essentially yeah. just cardboard do it that style but i figured i could just print it out and it'd be exact and they all seem to be very close like a perfect fit i mean it's all one file so it should all be perfect but yeah i don't know this is a uh, learning all, experience only <laughs> it's only as perfect as the 3d printer prints it oh god yeah that's gonna be questionable <laughs> <laughs> I've used packing tape for windows, Sorco approved. Uh, you're not lying. I've seen it. <clears throat> we need to start a petition to get Tim to start doing his Thursday night live streams again. He's been missing for too long. Yeah. Uh, what's the breakover angle on the pace setter? Pace setter is 10 degrees. The skid angle is 10 degrees. Actual breakover angle is measured by your setup, but the skid angle is 10 degrees. Two liter soda bottle. Yeah. Any plastic food containers. Yeah. That, yeah. They're not, all those ideas are, are solid ideas, but uh, two liter soda, soda bottles are round. So <laughs> flat windows would, out of a round bottle. I actually just threw away a Coke two liter. I bet you, I bet you that bottle might be. Maybe a tad thinner than this. This is actually kind of thick. I thought one mil wasn't going to be a lot. Turns out it is. Yeah. I've got Again, some one I... millimeter carbon over there on the bench. It's, it's thicker than you think it is. I was um, going to make the bed for this out of one millimeter carbon sheet. But I'm after I bigger. got the sheet, after I got the sheet and weighed it, and I weighed the completed printed bed, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm leaving the printed parts in there. You should cut some of these out of that carbon. Out of the one millimeter? That won't work. Really? I mean, this is one no. six. Yeah, that won't work. Definitely not the winch mount. I, well, yeah, okay, so the ESC mounts would probably work, but the winch mount absolutely would not work. <laughs> You have to double stack. <laughs> um, I got to get the front links too, right? Making I got making sure I got everything I need. You only need so the the two front upper links are only required if you're running axle mounted servos. If you're running chassis mounted servo, you don't need those links. Um, and also if you do, if you are running axle mounted servos, I include the Traxxas, uh, 5347 rod ends. You can run the stock axial rod ends, which keeps the front axle caster angle about the same as factory, or you can run one axial rod end and one Traxxas rod end and angle the axle back a little bit or you can run two Traxxas rod ends and angle the axle back even more, which is how I ran my truck. A little bit more caster angle gives you a little bit better steering. Um, it does affect the drive shaft angles a little bit, but it's not enough for them to bind up. So that's how I ran mine. It's going to uh, bug me. Huh? It's going to bug me if that... Um... If I can set that whole body up and it costs less to print that than I'd paid for uh, filament, 
<laughs> Dude, I bet you. So each section was probably about like two thirds of a spool of like what was it? Uh, whatever the one, what however the like your normal small spool of filament. I bought four yeah. spools because I didn't want one to run out while it was printing. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, with the like body and all the supports minutes. and everything. Yeah, that might have been like seventy to eighty dollars in filament. I don't know. I tried not to add it up because once I started, you just you're committed at and, that point. So. <laughs> and two hundred two hundred hours of printing. Dude, yeah, actually, that it might might have been more. Might have been more. <laughs> Tim said, if you don't mind hearing Bluey in the background, I can probably have the little one chill next to me. <laughs> hey, I, I'm i lucky that my son didn't watch that much Bluey. So, like, I didn't get super annoyed by it. I thankfully didn't have to watch that. Now he's uh, going to be eight this spring going to be eight in June. So like, thankfully his tastes have changed from things like that. Uh, what's more valuable, a 3d printer or a CNC router? Um, more valuable personally or more valuable, um, to make money with manufacturing stuff because my answers are going to be totally different. <laughs> If you are wanting to make stuff for yourself within this hobby, a 3D printer is a very valuable machine. However, the more money you spend on them, the better they are. Like if, if I were going to go back and buy my first 3D printer right now, it'd be a Bamboo Labs P1S, P1P, or X1 Carbon. Just spend the money and be done with it. Because it's a printer that's going to last forever. I have a $150 Ender 3 Pro printer that works great, but it's slower than molasses. So, like, if you're trying to make money with it, you're never going to make money with it because it's just so slow. You have to have 50 of them running parts at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, routers uh, open your open your wallet to manufacturing for other people. So carbon fiber chassis, G10 chassis, Delrin components, things like that. Um, uh, most of the CNC routers are um, marketed that they'll cut brass and aluminum and this and that, and they will. But again, it's painfully slow. There's much better machines for that. So if all you're doing is wood, carbon fiber, or G10, a router is fantastic for that stuff. That's what I use to cut all of the carbon and G10 chassis here. I could technically make skid plates on the router, but they work so much. It's so much better to do in a mill. It's so much more efficient to do in the mill. There's a proper tool for every job. So if you're, you know, if you're trying to make money, you need a router. If you're trying to just make your own parts and fiddle and tinker in the hobby, a printer is fantastic. I think you should get both really, but be an X1C or a small table CNC. So the thing about a small router, don't get anything less than 24 inches. Um, these 15 inch, 15 to 18 inch cut area, you can't really cut chassis on efficiently. Um, if you're cutting them for yourself, it's no big deal. Um, but you need more room than that to nest them to make it efficient to cut them. So, but it, but if you're doing it for yourself, then whatever. But if you're a woodworker, you know the limitations of small tooling too. You know, if you buy a small table saw and need to do something big, you're screwed. But if you have a big table saw, you can do small things. Uh, 
Um, love my class three pace setter, but she needs to go on a diet. Weighed it the other day, and it's sitting at eight pounds. Good grief. That's heavy. I don't have a single comp truck over six pounds. Uh, this body alone is over a pound. <laughs> As it is. Without anything on it. No windows, headlights. <laughs> no interior, no nothing. No. It's a thick girl right now. That's, uh, you're going to need some <laughs> brass, my friend. <laughs> you're going to spend uh, more money in brass keeping that thing on. from rolling over. I got some stuff I'm working on. Yeah. I was thinking a I three foot a by four foot. Truck. That's a good working size. Ain't going to be a comp truck. Yeah, probably not. I said that about this carbon fiber body that I bought. I was like, I'm not going to run that. It's too nice. It's too expensive. And then I put it on a truck and rolled it over immediately. And I was like, it's a cop truck now. <laughs> <laughs> it's got scratches on it. Now it's a cop truck. Yeah. I really need to reprint this bed. I only made the bed a half a millimeter thick, though, when I designed it. So like it, so it wouldn't weigh anything, but unfortunately, it's not strong either. The it's only like thing holding this truck. bed together, it's like a the only thing holding this bed body. together at this point is uh, like the wrap. Yeah, and I I stuck my aluminum tailgate to the wrap, and then the bed broke, and the wrap peeled. So like this is. Partially license plate, partially wrap, and partially 3D printed bed pieces. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's been like that for like a year. It's been like that since October. It cracked at Carlapalooza, so... Thick girl needs a brass bottom. <laughs> that's that's not a lie. You're gonna have to buy all the brass. Nah, I'm not gonna do any brass. I'm that's not a no bold choice. Scale truck. That's a bold choice. I like the challenge. Let's get it. I can hear the wind picking up outside even more than it was. I was going to um, say, it's either that or Bear dreaming over here. He's running. No, I can, <laughs> I can hear the billboard out front. There's like, it like bangs real bad, real hard when the wind smacks the banners against it. I can hear it banging and I can get it. Uh, connection is unstable internet warnings so Sick. oh your internet just your your screen just flickered too so i don't know if it's yours or mine but i keep getting warnings about internet connection i assume it's my internet because it's getting pretty windy out there you working on that model i am yeah i'm uh I need to like live feed it to the TV behind me. That'd be kind of funny. You can see how boring when... this process is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I sent that C1 getting... Pro Leafer file to the laser shop to be cut in steel, I don't know what happened with that file when you emailed it to me, but it is, it had some issues. Uh, I wonder if they're using it as splines or not. Well, even I opened it on my end, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. That file's fucked. <laughs> like, 
I didn't even open it on my end first. I just saved it and forwarded it on. And then, then I opened it and I'm like, Oh yeah, let me fix that. Hang on. <laughs> it had a bunch of open, bunch of open lines in it. And it had a bunch of like stray points and anchors that like were showing up on the file and like, doubled up lines that were on top of each other so like when you went to make it a solid outline there was still open lines underneath it i keep lagging yeah okay so it is mine i'm not surprised i might like i said it's it's getting pretty <laughs> pretty noisy out there i might end up losing internet here in a little bit the uh, carrier pigeons are landing on your internet cable. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I what... don't know what... Nothing new and crazy is going on over here lately. How about yourselves? Yeah. <laughs> Not really. That That's who... That's not what I wanted. That's who that chassis is for that I was talking about. What's up, dudes? Got home late. Sick Whitechapel shirt. I uh, I was actually wearing... I was wearing one of my Sacred Mountain tattoo shirts earlier today. From their tattoo shop. I'm trying to look up the weather here and see if it tells how windy it is currently. Windy enough. Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't say what the doesn't say what the wind gusts are currently. It's definitely enough to make the billboard sound like it's coming down. I've got the Jeep parked inside. Of course, I washed the Jeep on Saturday and cleaned it up, detailed it up, and even washed the windows for the first time ever, which is very strange. Like, I cleaned the windows and the mirrors, and then, like, when I was on my way home today, I was like, wow, I can actually see out of this thing. That's pretty strange. <laughs> but, of course, I washed it, and now it's going to storm tomorrow. It's probably my a... fault that it's... I'm such a stickler happen. with like glass. It's got to be freaking. <laughs> I can't deal with any streaks or smudges. Get that. I... Get it out of here. Like I've cleaned the window. I like when I've washed the exterior. I've washed the windows, but like I've never taken glass cleaner and cleaned inside and out and cleaned the glass on the mirrors. Um, and that's what I did. And I'm like, wow. I guess I had no idea how dirty it was until after I cleaned it. I'm like, well, I can actually see stuff now. Not that you can see a whole lot out of a JK anyway, but I can see things. Right. <laughs> Man, I'm really curious. Um, I'm trying to figure out the, the weather over there. Yeah, I am. Like... It's windy as shit. Wind. It says 20 mile an hour, but it doesn't tell what the gusts are. I mean, a steady 20 mile an hour wind is pretty solid. Solid wind. <laughs> So when you go camping, how far out do you normally go? Like from home? Um, usually, I go to like good spots. So I'm usually probably going about an hour and a half, two hours outside of town. Um, but there's good spots this that are about an hour out. There's some closer, but I mean, you just... The light pollution, so, I mean, basically it's like there's like a glow in the sky because there's so much light pollution, even an hour outside of town. How far is it to you, 
till you get to the coast? Um, that's like three, three hours. The coast is cool, gotcha. but man, that's like you need almost like a disposable tent or something really strong. Like the tent I have can take like sixty mile an hour winds, but like you'll go to the coast and you'll see just awning carcasses. They just get decimated because it's a it's a steady wind. It's not just like a like. A, every now and then gust. Um, yeah. I've been out there when there's been no wind, and that was probably the worst experience because on the backside of the dunes is like a marsh. That's mosquito paradise. So when there's no wind, they found <laughs> the the camp. Um, yeah. And there, that was terrible. I almost left like at, like three in the morning because I couldn't stand <laughs> the mosquitoes. Well, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's a JK, is... just drive by feel. Yeah, it's a it's a JK. You just guide it down the road. You don't even drive by feel. You feel whether you hit a curb or not. You just kind of guide with the steering wheel. You don't you don't steer it. You just kind of let it float. Like the wind right now is coming like straight out of the south, and my drive home is straight east. So, like, driving a billboard down the road. A brick. It's, a, it's an interesting drive, driving a lifted brick down the road in the wind. Always camp where there's no cell service. That is not a bad motto. <laughs> That's not bad unless you're in a spot to where you, you're not familiar with. So... For example, the coast, um, you don't always get cell service. So you usually want to take a gun down there because uh, there could be some animals down there. There's a bunch of coyotes, I think boars. Um, sometimes there's people trying to hop the border. That's a pretty close spot down there. So desperate people, I don't know. Yeah. That island is kind of like a no man's land. I haven't ran into anybody or anything in particular, but it only needs to happen once, right? Yeah. It doesn't doesn't take any more than once to, to make you decide to not want to do that again. Yeah. There's um last time I went there was coyote tracks like circled around the truck when I woke up. I was like, oh, those aren't my dog's tracks. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's better than a coyote's tracks. No, it was coyote's tracks. Oh, it was coyote yeah. tracks. Got it. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't my dog. I remember cleaning an ex's car. The inside of the windshield was gross. Smoker. So, my mom is a smoker, and when she went, uh, she went and bought a new car probably three or four years ago, I think. And she had a 05 Chevy half ton four wheel drive extended cab truck uh, before that. And she wanted me to sell it for her and I cleaned it. I, I detailed it and due to every single one of the windows was like slime from smoking. Mm -hmm. The driver's side window for like four or five years was broken. The regulator was broken. So, like, she just drove with the passenger window cracked to smoke in the truck. So, like, everything was just covered in slime. It was gross. It took me hours to clean just the windows. It was bad. That's pretty gross. Oregon has great camping. Central Oregon especially has some cool bike trails. Oh, speaking of bikes, I rode a Suron today for a little bit. A modded modded Suron, upgraded battery, upgraded motor, upgraded controller, wheels and tires, upgraded shocks. It was it was pretty cool. Not, you buy one? not no no <laughs> no. I saw the price tag. No, I don't. Nope. Mm -mm. They're not that bad. No, it was. I'd rather have a motorcycle. 
<laughs> I could buy a I could buy a pretty decently nice motorcycle for what this Suron cost. The uh, I don't know what was the price tag under five. No. Oh. <laughs> no cell service. One hundred and ten plus miles for me. That's that's pretty far out there, man. Columbia River That's, Gorge has some killer mountain bike trails too. I need to go. Yeah, I need to go up there. Yeah. Sorry, I'm super lame. I'm trying to. I'm obsessed now with trying to get this whole body uh, multi jet fusion printed. <laughs> yeah. Because I, the curiosity, I just want to know if it. Uh, how much more expensive could it be to get the whole yeah. body multi-jet printed? Electric dirt bike, good stealth vehicle. This so this Suron had an 18 inch rear, 20 18 inch rear, 21 inch front with like dirt bike style tires on it. And uh, I mean, it was it was fun. It ripped, but I don't know if I could buy one. It's fun to ride. I just don't know if I could buy one. I'd have two thirds as much in a electric. What I mean, what, do you call it a bicycle? It's not a bicycle. It, electric thing. I'd have two thirds as much in that as I have in my actual daily driver lifted JK. Like, I don't know, man. It's definitely cool. Definitely awesome. Definitely fun to ride. But, whew. I after I rode it, I started looking up some some of the um, some of the parts that are on this bike, and I was like, yeah, no, that adds up real fast. I'm good. I was looking at the was it the Seron Light B, and I was like, man. I was that's seeing that's for like what it thirty four hundred bucks like stock, and I was like, "It's not this, too bad." And it was a light B. Bad. It's a light B, but it's got an upgraded battery, an upgraded controller, an upgraded motor, and a chain drive conversion, upgraded shocks, wheels and tires, handlebars, levers. Like the only thing stock on it was the frame, the seat, and the and the swing arm. Realistically. Yeah. So you take a $3,500 $3, bicycle and throw 90% of it in the trash. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. Depends on what you're going to do with it, I guess. But that's too much. That's more than what I've yeah, I Yeah. It's, it's definitely super cool, and it definitely has a use. Um, I think I'd be just as happy with an e-bike, though, like a pedal assist bike. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Suddenly, brazen rails are 150 each, so we can have an e bike. No, <laughs> no, if materials keep going up, though, dude, I don't know. I, just, I, th I think we've talked about it on the stream a little bit. I don't even bother with G10 anymore because it just doesn't make sense. When I started cutting chassis in 2015. A two foot by two foot sheet of G10 was like forty dollars. It's a hundred and something dollars now. So like, you can't. You know, there's only so much that people are willing to pay for a chassis, and there's only you know there's a dollar amount that I'm not willing to make them for anymore. And we met that we met that profit margin. So it was one of those things where it's like, if I can't find this same quality or better material at a cheaper cost, it's got to go. Right. And it just had to go. It just doesn't, it just didn't make sense anymore. The volume that it was selling and the cost of materials just made it not worth my time anymore. Um, we're not... <laughs> We're not getting rich doing this at all. Not even close to getting rich doing this. 
but I also don't want to lose money, and that's basically where I was at. Um, to call for help, you get, they give you a flare gun. Where are you located, Flatlander? <laughs> that sounds like my place. Come on, man. You just got to get that Garmin in reach. Yeah. That's where uh, a lot of people now are buying like these separate, although the, it is getting easier to get like a satellite phone, but now you're now you got a new phone. You're paying a, a monthly service. Yep. To me, that's a little... I'm not into it that much, right? Yeah. I'm happy with my $1,100 no-frills e-mountain bike to get around San Diego. That, and So my brother uh, just bought a... I don't even know what brand it is, but it's from one of the local bicycle shops around here that they service and supply. So uh, I think it was like 1500 bucks. And he's really happy with it. I rode it. It's definitely a nice, a reasonable bike. I've ridden enough modded mountain bikes with good shocks on them that I know what a good shock setup feels like. And so, like, stock stuff, I can always tell that it's like, eh, it could be better. I'm sure if you jumped on a bicycle from a bike shop that wasn't an upgraded type of bike, you'd be like, yeah, we can do better than that. But, That's why my two thousand dollar bike went to a four thousand dollar bike. <laughs> that yeah. sense. The when you jump off something that's like ten foot, you want to be certain that the the bike is not going to put you into the ground. Cause right, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there just for no links and stubby conversions for my front line, ready to get this build rocking. I cut both of your frontline chassis today, actually. I think Wesley froze. Either Wesley froze or my computer wholly froze up. Let me know in the comments who froze. I can't hear Wesley, so I assume he froze. <clears throat> um yeah Wes is gone yeah he's actually out of the out of the room now so I'm sure he'll be right back <clears throat> oh <laughs> his phone died so that's cool We'll get him back in here. Um, camping happens in northern Ontario, north of Red Lake. I live in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Oh, so you're not too far from me, Flatlander. Uh, normally, if you're north, if you're in the northwest burbs of Chicago, you're two and a half hours from me, less than three hours from me. Like, it takes me, like, right at two hours to get to O'Hare from here. So, however far you are from O'Hare normally. Uh, Wes has left the building. Yeah. We'll see if he can get his phone charging and, and find the link I sent him. I might have to resend a link to him. Anyway, Harley, back to your thing. I uh, yeah, I cut I cut the flat, uh, front line chassis for you uh, this morning, so those should be on their way to you tomorrow. I wasn't able to get to the UPS store before they closed today because I had so many. Uh... <laughs> He's back. I had so many I'm interruptions right. today that I wasn't able to get to the UPS store today. Now your phone's plugged in? Yeah. Um, odd. <laughs> I wondered why the screen dimmed. I was like, all right, maybe it's a heat thing. No, that's that was the last 2% of battery. Cool. So there's the technical difficulties we were looking for. Yeah, we got to have something every day, so or every Monday. Keep us on our toes. 
Right. It's not a Monday without technical difficulties. <clears throat> so what's on the agenda for the rest of the week for you? I know you work tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, but. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm hoping for some RC goodies to show up because I'd like to get this body. I'd like to order the, so I found the paint code for this, um, what do they call it, Nebula Gray. I found the paint code and I found it. You can get rattle cans of this paint, like exact paint code. So I'd like to get this painted this week. I think it'd be cool. Um, yeah. That way I can just get it out of the way. Cause the more and I, the more I sit and stare at it, I'm like, eh, I could probably sand here, and then I'll sand there, and then I'll be like, man, I don't know. I could probably sand that a little smoother. I'm just tired of like walking by and looking at it, like. Yeah. And I just end up, I keep sanding like dumb little spots and I'm just like, I need to just paint it and live with it um, because I'm just going to mess it all up as soon as I take it out anyway. So I need to not like be so anal with it. <laughs> yeah. My, I keep, the, I keep hearing the alerts on my camera. And it's got me concerned. I think what I don't I see anybody. Do... Don't see anybody out front, so it's got to be somebody out back, or got to be something out back. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna look into maybe some other bodies to get um, nylon printed. I'd like to get this one printed if it's not an arm and a leg, just to see what the weight difference is, because. It's not too difficult. Like the cut I did on that um, that Land Cruiser body, I can do that digitally and mesh it together. And I could actually print out whole comp bodies. Yeah. Uh, I think that'd actually be kind of a fun project. I don't know. Like I said, it's going to be whatever my cost is, is going to determine it. Because if it's stupid, I'm not going to try and like mark it up 30% to like make a gain or make my money back if it's yeah. some astronomical price. But if it's reasonable, yeah. I could actually make it happen. Um, it'd be kind of cool. Not this. West Desert button. Wheelers. West no. Desert Wheelers in the house. Thanks, Logan, for checking in. Dang. Logan I'm just picked up a... I'm jealous of that buggy. Yeah, for real. Um, I need to excuse myself for just a second here. I need to verify that this truck out behind my shop is supposed to be here uh, because I don't think they are supposed to be here. I will be right back. <laughs> in other news um, I didn't really discuss it but here I'm holding out just because I want to keep up this um, I'm not getting out of the seat I am planning on I'm holding out till the first of the month but I have these gold anodized tylos and I wanted to see I should have got these in gold too but I did black because I wanted to see how the finish looked um, I will be having five sets of the C1 Pro Leafers and five sets of the um, gold anodized Hilos on the site April 1st, which I guess that's kind of funny because that's going to be April Fools, right? Um, we're not fooling around now. Um, but I, I like to see the comments see what y'all think but i think i'm gonna do gold anodized frames a limited run the first of each month um next month i have some a pretty cool frame lined up i'm not gonna tell anybody what it is until we throw it on the site 
Um, I was just explaining to them about that gold frame limited runs. Um, now, me and you kind of discussed maybe some special colored G10 or carbon fiber, maybe. Yeah, I've uh, been looking, been looking up materials and stuff. I hate buying colored carbons. <laughs> I have not found a good U.S. made carbon fiber with like the silk weave and stuff yeah. that's glossy and double sided. You can find it on one side with a peel ply back on the other side, but finding it glossy, double sided, and U.S. materials is damn near impossible. So you're kind of relegated to. Uh, you would have to like Overseas. nest them, like. Yeah, you have to do a left and right rail. You have to yeah. do left and right rails, but they're still rough on the backside. Oh, I don't, there's no finish at all. Got it. No. Yeah. So uh, didn't hear any. Stuff. Yeah, Plenty. didn't hear any hole punchers being operated. No, as soon as they saw me, they left. So nothing says I'm not supposed to be here. Like leaving as soon as you see a human. <laughs> yeah. Like. It's just like that day that we were, you know, a, what was it, a month or a month and a half ago or whatever, where the, was the dude was door. literally looking in the window of my <laughs> door, like, yeah. Um, people are casing your shop. Well, they were probably uh, they were probably looking for U-Haul trailers. There's a bunch of U-Haul trailers behind my shop on the five acres out back, and those freaking trailers get stolen all the time. Opinions on carbon Kevlar always like the black and yellow. You cannot cut that shit. Yeah, I me. Mean, I already brought this up to Brett before. <laughs> yeah, I and, and I, I was like, dude, carbon Kevlar would be sick, but it would look so, like a, a lawn <laughs> wood chipper. Yeah. So the carbon Kevlar, most carbon Kevlars are a fiberglass core with a layer of carbon and Kevlar on the outside. The Kevlar is the colored part. So there's one layer of carbon fiber and, and a layer mixed in with Kevlar. When you try to cut that stuff, the Kevlar does not cut. The Kevlar rips and it frays and it leaves fuzzy edges. It, it looks absolutely atrocious. I spent like $300, $350 on a sheet of blue carbon Kevlar because I was like, oh, that's exactly what I want. I love the blue color. It looks great. And then as soon as I started cutting it, I was like, oh, this is not going to work. Like it cut, but everywhere where there was Kevlar, it was like frayed shoestrings hanging out the side of the chassis. And there was no reasonable way to clean it up to the point where like it would even be remotely acceptable to use on my own truck, let alone try to sell it to somebody else. Right. Um, super stoked on the new car. Do you guys source all materials U S yes, we do. Um, all, all of our, uh, carbon is U S U S sourced and U S manufactured. Um, the steel and aluminum chassis are, are made in the USA with US materials. Um, if there is anything on our site that is not US, it's noted, which there hasn't been in a while. Um, I think the only like bulk thing I threw on there was those like leaf spring kits. Yeah. But um, the, the universal leaf spring kits yeah. that, you know, that stuff is what it is, but it's always noted on there that like, hey, these are globally sourced. Yeah. I, I don't know how many people that actually matters to, but it matters to me. Yeah. And to be honest, we could probably double our revenue, if not triple, outsourcing to like China for stuff. Um, I think we've touched on this topic before too, but I do, at the end of the day, I don't like shipping, I don't like sending my files to non like, reputable resource or like people i don't trust um yeah well i can tell you i can tell you for a hundred percent fact that i can order the same size sheets of carbon fiber 
manufactured in China for like 40% the cost of a U.S. sheet of carbon. But you get like, that. You, there's a quality difference. And if you know, if you've had the Chinese, like Ala Express frames I see, you can tell. You can tell. Now, I will, I will say that the Chinese carbon is much easier to cut. I, I prototype on sheets of Chinese carbon. I do. But the prototypes never leave my hands. They, they're, they're stacked up. They're stacked up on my bench. Um, the holes blow out a lot less because there's voids and the materials are lesser. Where low void, high impact carbon is much more difficult to cut. So like the backsides of the holes when you're boring a hole, they will flake out a little bit. <clears throat> but that's just just because the carbon is that much more dense than it, it does that. Um, so, I, but again, I, I could absolutely increase my revenue by purchasing cheaper materials. I just don't, I just don't, yeah. um, need to add more brazen to my lineup. We'd be glad to be glad to make that happen, Logan. Um, I really, really, really need to get out there. I <laughs> Moab and Sand Hollow are two two places I need to get to, and it'd probably be a one trip deal. Just take like ten days and head out. It's like a twenty three hour one way drive though, <laughs> so like <laughs> it's a trip. Um. Not that, um, not that my regular traffic Rubicon JK would do anything close to what a, uh, <laughs> a buggy would do. But I'm also willing to put my JK in situations that it probably shouldn't be in. <laughs> yeah. I think we're trying um, to get to Trail Hero. Is that in the fall? I can't remember. I think so. Easter Jeep Safari is going on right now in Moab. <laughs> you can ditch those rock pirates. Um, I, the rock pirate stuff look. I I don't have any complaints about the rock pirate stuff. I I'm still not a hundred percent sold on their four millimeter chassis holes. The holes the in the shock towers. The holes in the shock towers are like four or four and a half millimeters instead of being eighth inch. Hmm. It's a, an interesting choice. Trail Heroes first week of October. That's right. I think uh, the I think we've talked about well, I say we, but me and the guys at the cruiser shop, I think they're we're talking about going out to that. Um, when is Crawlapalooza? Does anybody know? I don't know when it is. <laughs> Waiting on my next two chassis arriving, not leaving town this time to miss delivery by one day. <laughs> What'd you order this time? Did you? Is it from us? I don't remember. I don't remember sending. Oh, I, I did see. I did send two chassis in one box the other day, but I don't remember who it was to. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to look up Crawlapalooza. They're not going to post anything until like a week before. No, no, but. Uh, <laughs> No, but the town does sometimes. The town, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the town. Yeah, the the fact that they don't um, 
the fact that they don't promote the event like they need to is something else. I get that they get busy, but... No, I mean, it doesn't take that long to post to make a post about an event that you're having. I, I yeah, I just don't. Yeah, it's not there. I don't see anything listed yet. October eighteenth and twentieth, eighteenth uh, to twentieth is what Theron says. Um, is Logan a Toyota guy or a Jeep guy? If it's not a buggy, if it's a Toyota vehicle or a Jeep vehicle, not a tube chassis out buggy, Logan, what is your preference? What is a drop in with a chassis to you guys? Rock Pirates is the only out there I feel. We have the Oracle and the Pace Setter that are both 100% bolt in to the SCX10 Pro. We have the Flatline and the Hardline that are 100% bolt in to the factory Vanquish VRD Carbon. If you can take every single screw out and put every single screw back in and line the body back up where it was supposed to be, that's about as drop in as it gets, I think. Um, so there's two complete platforms that we have two different chassis for in each platform. I think that's about as bolt in as it gets. I think we have the VP stuff covered, man. Yeah. He says, I love me some beat to hell Toyota pick up shit boxes. I love them when they turn into raisins. <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> type of Toyota is a raisin. I feel he's a Ford guy, so he rolls in a Raptor. Yeah. There was a Raptor at uh, the place I went to lunch today that, that looked pretty sick. It had um, shock hoops up through the bed and some big tall kings on the rear of it. So 37s on it. looked pretty good. It was like a like a orange, red orange colored Raptor. Looked really good. I'm not it I'm not usually a Raptor guy, but it looked really good. <laughs> I can see Raisin versus Rock Pirates, Jeep versus Toyota. Didn't know if Logan has a trail truck. Logan has Logan just bought a buggy. Tube chassis yeah. buggy. Looks really looks really good. I'm jealous, just so is Wesley. <laughs> yeah. When I get out there, we'll have I'll have to I'm I, like I said, Moab and Sand Hollow are two must do in the next like twelve to eighteen months for me. So um, I will have to get a hold of Logan when I'm out there. I want Logan to drive this truck. I want Logan to drive this class one truck and tell me what he thinks of it. Uh, Logan's going to have to show me trails that I can do in the GX <laughs> <laughs> at Sand Hollow. I'm sure I could find something. I don't mind some rock slider love. I got enough of that last or the other weekend. I think I, I think I pulled those. I've uh, broke in the rock sliders. Uh, I was worried the plastic gap. They recommended like a three quarter inch gap in between the rock slider and the 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 factory step by to cut off. Um, yeah, I thought that looked like a lot, but after the other weekend, those did move up about a half inch. So I see huh. why they had such an aggressive like panel gap. Yeah. Um, I don't like chassis like Zoku that claim to be drop in, but half of it's three D printed. I also like the Rock Pirate can accept like five different brands of trucks. So Paul, the the one of the nice one of the nice things about the most common trucks is that the skid plate bolt patterns damn near the same on all these trucks. So like the entirety of the Brazen lineup is based off of SCX 10 
skid bolt pattern, with the exception of our VP stuff. The SCX-10 bolt spread on that fits all SCX-10-1, the SCX-10-2 RTR, basically every brand of aftermarket skid plate for anything SCX related. Element, uh, the original Element style skid plates and trans. And with that means you're going to be able to use all of the factory links in all of those vehicles and you can use the factory shocks. So if it's an axle mounted servo, no issues. If it's a chassis mounted servo, our dual servo mounts fit our chassis and then you can mount all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's your factory cross bracing. That's the big thing that most, most of the after most of the factory trucks use different hole spacing and all their cross braces. So if you're running like tubular bracing at 67 or 70 millimeters wide, as long as the skid plate bolts to the chassis, Totally fine. Um, Raptor allows me access to my area in more places than most 4x4 trucks. Not a diehard Ford guy, but I'm slowly turning into one. If you guys come out, definitely let me know. I absolutely would be a... I would definitely let you know. At least a couple of weeks ahead of time. We should all shoot for a trail here, um... Unless that, is that going to be too busy then? Is that place just going to be? A, well, if I go to if I go to Trail Hero, I wouldn't be able to go to Crawlpalooza. They're that's too close together and and too far from home. They're not they're not close enough together to make it one trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're too close together to make two trips. True. Struggling to find color reference material for the four door Mo Mojave trying to paint a replacement for my TF2 leafer. Um, I would just go to the Toyota dealer and ask them for color charts or color codes, or you could get on and find touch-up paint. You can jump online and search whatever year and model truck you're looking for touch-up paint, and you can buy it that way. So checkered what i did with this um i know my paint code name or my name is like nebula gray so i looked up nebula gray uh touch-up paint and on amazon you can get a whole aerosol can of it if you had to do like a fender i mean thankfully i'm not doing a fender i'm painting an rc car but uh, i would not want to be the guy that wants to buy a rattle can of that paint but uh, you can get it straight off Amazon. There's a couple uh, like paint companies on there. So if you know what the paint color is called, you can probably find it. Um, and like Brett said, you can probably go on there and look up, you know, 2015 Tacoma, whatever, cement gray or whatever it is. It's pretty easy. Um... Automotive touch-up paints by model. Um, exact match touch-up paints made easy. Choose your make. Uh, Toyota. What year would that be? Like 80 something? What is that? The long the four door, yeah, yeah. The four door, what would that be? 80, 85? I don't know. Um, the so that's where it kind of loses me because the four door stuff would be overseas and they had random body styles like a decade longer than what we ever had them, so I don't really yeah. Know. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There was like fourteen different colors in nineteen eighty-five for Toyota trucks. So, 
I just got on automotive touchup.com was the very first website that came up. <laughs> Not looking to do jihadi white. <laughs> Dude, if you just put a freaking gun in the back, it would be totally fine. 82, 84, 83, 83 Hilux. It's got to be pretty now we're easy. It's just single stage pain. <laughs> yeah, now we're getting older than me. 83 Hilux, 83 Toyota truck came in silver metallic or red metallic. <laughs> um, yeah. What was 84. Man, Harley with the Land Cruiser question. It's honestly so hard for me to recommend new Toyota trucks to people. Like I have like friends with like the Raptor uh, Ranger and the new or that uh, like ZR. What is it? The ZR2 um, Colorado. Like those trucks are awesome. <laughs> the the new Tacoma seems kind of gimmicky. They don't really they don't really disclose like the fuel mileage. That and the Land Cruiser. Um, I don't know. I think they're gonna be cool, but I don't. I'd give them a couple of years because actually, if Tim's still in here, ask Tim about the. Uh, the hybrid systems on the Tundras right now. Would he buy a new Tundra right now? Because I don't think he will. Because I think he's been pulling cabs off of them to uh, <laughs> to fix them, <laughs> the warranties. Yeah. My wife really likes her 2021 Grand Cherokee Limited. We haven't had any issues out of it at all. Plenty of room for our three-person family, but... Anyway, it's after 10 p.m. Oh, wow, that's quick. I have been here since 7.30 this morning. Yeah. I think next week maybe I'll see about hooking up the getting fusion on this and maybe playing around with some mesh bodies to where people can watch. So I don't, I'm not just like this on my computer screen. I'm looking boring. <laughs> yeah. But... Sounds good. Um, you guys got any other questions here real quick before we get out of here for the evening? Are you going to stay the night there to make sure those people don't come back? Nah. I got cameras and insurance for that. Fair enough. Plus, I think they'd have a hard enough time getting this 17,000-pound piece of machinery off my showroom floor before I got here. <laughs> I think they would break in and they'd be like, oh, this is clearly the wrong building. Yeah, they'd grab my metal masher bodies and crumple them up and be like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the biggest loss they can take is my metal masher Bronco and, and Yoda bodies over there. <laughs> be about the only thing they could get out the door before I got here in my five minute drive at Mach yeah. Jesus. I bet I could get here and I bet I could get here in less than three. But I can get here in less than three minutes if I just disregarded everything on my way here. You can see where you're going now that your windshield's cleaned out. <laughs> yeah. No, if I were going to get here in a hurry, I'd have to jump in the Ram, <laughs> not the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to jump in the wife's Grand Cherokee. It'll get here much faster than the JK will. The Jeep looks more menacing, though. I wouldn't be too scared of a Grand Cherokee. <laughs> you don't have to be scared of the Jeep, just the whole punch that gets out of it. <laughs> well, all right. right. It's uh ten of ten oh five. I'm gonna get out of here for the night. Uh thanks everybody for checking in. We'll see you next week. Alrighty, later, later. guys.